And there we have it folks, mounted on a wall. Got to do a little bit of uh, patchwork in the wall there. What's going on folks? Welcome on back to m, m Homesteading. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, living out here in the country, how do we heat our house? One of the ways is this fireplace or wood stove right behind me, which works awesome. That's actually uh, the majority of the heat and keeps our house, uh, well, as hot as we want it really, but we keep it around 75 uh, with that alone. But <clears throat> I want to talk about how we heat because we have that and we also have a backup uh, boiler that does some things as well. We ran into an issue with the boiler to where when you run in the furnace in cer certain sections of the house, the wood burning stove in certain sections of the house, other sections can get cool um, that are way far away. And so it's like, how do you keep the boiler running when your other sections of the house are heated with this and the thermostat may be in a room over here and so it might be reading really hot, but the house on the other side is still cool. So I've actually come up with, not come up with, but I've uh, determined a solution for that, that uh, using a type of thermostat with some cool features that I wanted to share. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. And this video is gonna be a little bit mechanical. So if you're not into that type of stuff, um, feel free to <laughs> drop off. But if you're interested in how this stuff works and how things function, um, stick around. I think it'd be interesting. Alrighty guys, so <clears throat> this is the boiler room here at the house. So we got the boiler right there, we got our hot water uh, tank right there, and then all the piping and goodies associated with the uh, the system here. So basically when we're not using the wood furnace, this thing right here heats our entire house. We have uh, water heat and baseboard heaters uh, throughout the house. So this pumps hot water through those. And those radiate and heat the air in the house. It's a nice, even, warm heat. It works great. Um, in the other section of the house, we actually have in-floor heating. So it pumps hot water through the floor, and then that radiates heat up through the floor. <coughs> and that's how we heat that part of the house. Um, but what I wanted to share was, number one, how this works, and number two, what I've done to make it work even better in conjunction with the uh, wood stove. So basically what happens here is you've got all your hot water that gets heated here. You've got a circulation pump, and that pump through this big pipe goes out to your various zones. So you can see this is our basement here. We've got the upstairs pipe over there. We've got the hot water heater itself for the domestic hot water, and then we've got the uh, in-floor radiant valve right here um, for that part of the house that has the floor heating. So basically, if I've got a thermostat like the basement, which I'll be working with today, um, if I've got a thermostat on the wall and it calls for heat for the basement, it opens up this valve right here and that lets hot water flow through to that section of the house and kicks in the boiler here to heat up and allow that heat to be provided to that section of the house. The issue is this particular thermostat, that one and also the in-floor radiant, um, we're in close proximity to each other and the wood stove is also in close proximity to these two uh, thermostats that control these two valves. And basically we're having really hot temps near those thermostats and it wasn't turning on the heat for the other parts of the house. So let me show you. <clears throat> what I'm talking about. So we've got a thermostat right here and you can see it's actually reading 82 <laughs> from the wood stove. It doesn't feel like 82 in here. I think because it's dry, I probably need more humidity. But um, anyway, it's reading 82, so we're toasty. And then if I go over to the this section of the house, which is all the floor heating, this one, is actually 77 there's a bad glare there i know but basically this is reading 77 for our game room there you can kind of see it and it's reading 68 in the other room and you're saying well wait a minute how does this know that we have different temps in different rooms well guys <clears throat> This uh, screen here doesn't do it justice. I'll show you what it is. But this is actually the Honeywell T9 thermostat. And it's very hard to see. But um, 
This thermostat actually allows you to place a remote sensor in another room. So if you've got a different section of the house that's actually um, not, that's actually cooler, that remote sensor can read the telethermostat to kick on. Instead of this thermostat right here, which these are probably like, what, 15 feet of each other? Bad design. Anyway, this one here, which controls the basement heat, the baseboards, um, this one's reading 82 degrees, so it's like, okay, it's not going to kick on. But if you come over here to these bedrooms, and sure, we can open up the door. But this is the guest bedroom, so we don't typically let the cats in here. Um, this one is chilly. I can't tell you how, how cold it is, but probably 60-some degrees, if I had to guess. And then you've got the bathroom here, too, which is pretty warm uh, based off the wood stove. So this room is not really a concern. The door's always open. But... What we're going to do is actually replace this thermostat here with one that reads, with a T9, that reads the temp in the bedroom, so that if we have somebody over or something like that and they want some privacy, uh, they can close off that door and still get some heat from the boiler um, to keep them warm. And that way it's more even heat throughout the house and all rooms are heated. Um, just like over here, where we have another thermostat right here on this wall, for this big room, but over there is our master bedroom, and so we have a, a uh, sensor in there that reads the temp back to here so that we can control the temperature more evenly in our bedroom so it doesn't go cold when we're burning the fire. Now, <clears throat> sure, this might kill some of the efficiency related to the wood stove itself because, you know, when we're heating with this thing, it's not costing us anything oh that flame's really cool right but you know as long as you've got wood this isn't costing us anything there's no blowers there's no anything here uh, i do have a fan running for the room that actually blows the cold air into this room which is another tip if you can blow cold air from your rest of your house into your uh, stove room it creates a natural convection so your cold air is going to come in blow towards the stove and then the hot air rises right automatically and goes out through the rest of the house and that happens on its own. So when this is running, we want to solve the problem of those rooms going cold. And uh, we can do that with the T9 Honeywell T9 thermostat. So I'm going to actually go ahead and install that. And then I will show you guys how it's hooked up whenever I'm done. And, uh, you know, the cats love the fire too. So we got to have the fire, right? Right, Tigger? No, not talking today? All right. <laughs> uh, look how cool this is, right? Blue flame there. That's awesome. This thing is so hot, radiating a nice, what is it, 550 degrees off of it? Yeah. So, anyways, we're going to go install that thermostat. Now, when I'm done, I'll show you the wiring that you can use to do it. Um, a lot of people are going to say, hey, in an old boiler system, you can't install one of these. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you can. And uh, it's not very difficult as long as you have a 24 volt boiler system, which nine times out of 10 is what you're gonna have, not 100%, that's all of them. And if you got zone valves like this, uh, I'll show you how to connect it to there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you afterwards and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty folks, so here's your T9 thermostat, Honeywell. And um, you've got your remote sensor here as well. And uh, Basically, this goes where your current thermostat is, and this is going to go in the room or area where you want to read the temperature from. And you can have, I think, like up to 30 of these if you really wanted to, but you can put these anywhere. They just take a couple batteries, and uh, it communicates to here and make sure that everything's on point. So I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up and then show you guys uh, how I did it. Alrighty guys, that took some time. It's never easy. <laughs> Had to drill out the holes bigger to fit the new thermostat wire through. You will need a new thermostat wire uh, because you're going to need the common wire. But uh, And I'll show you where that connects on the back side. But uh, I did get everything through and got the CRW um, right together. There's a close up. C, R, and W. C is blue. And everything is connected there. So... I can go ahead and close this and everything looks good. I have a concrete wall here, so getting it 
uh, hung up was a chore, but I found a way to do it. And I know this isn't a concrete screw, but it's gonna hold just fine. Um, coming around the back here, there's the thermostat wire coming in. It comes right up to the uh, valve here. So if you have these valves, these are the Honeywell zone valves, and they're pretty common. Um, what you're gonna have is the control wires on top. These are gonna feed through to the boiler. And then the two left screws here, there's a red and a white. Those are coming from your thermostat, red and a white, from your regular thermostat. Farthest ones to the left. Red farthest to the left, white next to it right there. Let me see if I can get you in a little closer. All right. There's that. And then you got the blue and the white together there, which is your common or C wire. So you just look in your blue up there, which is 24 volts uh, back to ground from the transformer here, which is the, uh, what's the official term? Common, yeah, C wire. You can see the C right there. That feeds the extra leg here on the uh, valve. So got it connected. So I'll put the thermostat on and we'll see how it works. Okay guys, just to clarify, um, I have my red crossed over into my white. Now I've got them separated. Um, don't want to do that because then your heat will be on all the time. So make sure you got them um, in their separate screws there, which I do now. So now we are all good. So I'm going to put the thermostat on, flip that on. And just to be clear, you do not need a separate 24 volt transformer. The one that supplies power to your whole system is going to be uh, plenty. You just got to find that extra wire up there where your 24 volts is constant. Um, and a multimeter set on AC will help you test for that. So you can put your two multimeter leads across the uh, red and white in the back there on the bottom left. And that'll read 24 volts if your heat is not on. When you're calling for heat, there'll be no voltage, but then if you take red to the blue on the bottom, you will get 24 volts when it's calling for heat constantly. And that's where your thermostat's gonna get its power from. So we're gonna go ahead and put the thermostat on and show you how it works. And there we have it, folks. Mounted on a wall. Gotta do a little bit of uh, patchwork in the wall there from the old one, but uh, yeah, everything's good. It's on there good. That's the temperature in that bedroom that it's reading. But the sensor was a little hot, so I don't think it's accurate just yet. Um, have it set at 68, so when the room gets cold, it should kick in. But uh, you can see here in the priority, we've got the guest bedroom set to 77, which is back here. So good to go, and I'll show you where that sensor is too. I just mounted it in the room here on the wall right behind the TV. Um, you do want to mount it on an interior wall, um, which this is. So, yeah, that's about it. A little bit more involved than I expected, but uh, overall, went pretty good and it's working great. Alrighty guys, that's how we heat our house here, um, both with this wood stove back here and then the boiler with the new thermostat there. It'll keep the rooms nice and even and uh, we should be good to go. So once again, you don't need a C-wire adapter or anything like that. If you've got a boiler system with uh, zone valves like this, you can most certainly hook up a smart thermostat, no issues. So if you have any questions or need help, drop a comment down below. I'd be happy to help you out. Also like the video if it helped you out as well and subscribe to the channel if you... Uh, I want to learn more about living in the country and different things we experience and go through out here. Um, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you around. Until next time, guys, from our homestead to yours, Eminem out.